good. Yeah, we're being 7.01 p.m. on Monday, May 23rd, 2022. I'd like to call to order the City of Laconia City Council meeting. Before we go any further, I'd ask uh, Councillor Cheney if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I will fight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councillor. We're joined this evening by our recording secretary, Katie Gargano, Gargano um, and I'd ask her to please call the roll. Councillor Susie? Here. Councillor Cheney? Here. Councillor Littman? Here. Councillor Haynes? Here. Councillor Felch? Here. Mayor Hosmer? Here. Uh, Councillor Hamill is not here and indicated uh, ahead of time that he wouldn't be joining us. We're also joined at the council table by City Manager Scott Myers, and we have um, Glenn Smith, our uh, finance director, who's handling the IT this evening. Uh, first up on our agenda is uh, acceptance of meetings, uh, minutes from previous meetings. Minutes of the City Council regular meeting of May 9th, 2022 were distributed to the City Council on May 16th, 2022, with no corrections or changes submitted to the clerk. The minutes will be accepted as distributed. Item 7B, which is minutes of the City Council budget meeting of May 9th, 2022. And they were distributed to the City Council on May 16th, 2022, with no corrections or changes submitted to the clerk. The minutes will be accepted as distributed. Under item eight on our consent and action items, the Laconia Parks and Recreation has submitted a request for a temporary traffic order for the Laconia July 3rd, 2022 parade and festivities from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. I'm looking for a motion right now to move to approve the temporary traffic order 2022-07 July 3rd, 2022 parade and festivities to be held on July 3rd, 2022 from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So made by Councilor Felch, seconded by Councilor Haynes. Is there any further discussion on this item? Yes, Councilor Haynes. Um, is that the same parade route that it was last year? Yes. Okay. That could be a long route if it's sunny and hot. I know. That's why I was asking. Any further you, further discussion? It's hot last year, then rain. Yeah. I ride my bike this year. <laughs> all right. uh, seeing uh, no uh, further questions or comments, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hand. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Thank you. Um, moving on to item 8B, which is a request <clears throat> from Laconia Motorcycle Week Association uh, for permission to hold a hill climb on Tower Street on Tuesday, June 14th, 2022, from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. in conjunction with Laconia Motorcycle Week. This event will be facilitated by the United States Classic Racing Association and will be an exhibition race with vintage motorcycles. This event is fully this event is fully insured and it's a recurring event. Do you have something you want to add there that I missed? Mm. That may have been an error on, on our part. That should be 2 p.m. Oh. The 130 is just cutting a little close. If that's if the council approves. Fair enough. Nice. Right. Thank you. Go ahead. Just, uh, yeah, Charlie. <laughs> Can you refresh my memory, Charlie, as to the waiving of fees if that's a new request? I have no idea what fees there would be. Uh, perhaps uh, a loudspeaker fee. Other than that, there's no, there's, we don't do anything. There's no, um, no emission. It's strictly a exhibition. Um, so it it, it probably energy. would just be the loudspeaker fee and we, we typically waive fees in case there's anything random to it. But this one, yes. And we do, we, they do hire a uh, ambulance from the fire department that's paid for. Okay. So right now I'll be looking for a motion to move 
to approve the request for approval of a hill climb on Tower Street to be held Tuesday, June 14th, 2022, from 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in connection with Laconia Motorcycle Week 2022 and to waive all city fees associated with the event. So made by Councillor Susi, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Is there any further discussion on this issue? Just a clarification for the, for the minutes that the ambulance fee is picked up by the... All right. Any further discussion or questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Moving on to item 8C, which is uh, the Laconia Motorcycle Week Association Bike Show and Swap Meet is an annual recurring event. The association has requested the city waive vendor fees and all other city fees in connection with this event. Well, welcome back. Thank you. And I, I want to clarify that uh, the waiving of the vendor fee is for the $450 fee. However, there is a $35 fee that is put on um, to register motorcycles. I think it's $35. And the vendors that do show up, we don't get many. I believe they pay $35. They normally set up between uh, 7 a.m. and when the show ends, at, I think, at 2 o'clock also. And any money that's brought in by that, goes right to the city motorcycle week fund. So, yep. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Commission approved the event at their March 21st, 2022 meeting with, and the Special Events Review Committee approved the event at their May 4th, 2022 meeting. So right now I'll be looking for a motion to approve the request from Laconia Motorcycle Week Association to waive vendor and all of their city fees for a bike show and swap meet to be held June 17th, 2022 at Opichi Park. So made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Felch. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Uh, item number 8D, which is on July 23rd, 2022, the Lakes Region Rotary Club will be holding their ninth annual charity car show at the former Faro's Italian Grill property on Endicott Street North in the Weirs. Lakes Region Rotary Club is a 501c3 organization. They will be awarding a portion of the proceeds from this event to local charities. This is a recurring event. So right now I'll be looking for a motion to approve the request from the Lakes Region Rotary Club to waive city fees associated with their ninth annual charity car show to be held on July 23rd, 2022. So made by Councillor Felch, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Is there any further discussion or questions? Further discussion? Just oh. on the fees, is this consistent with prior? Yes, we've done this in the past and this being a charitable organization where they're putting the money back into the community. I think this is different than what you chose not to do with the for-profit craft fair in the same location. Okay. Thank you. You read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Made me scramble there for a minute. <laughs> all right, with no further questions or comments, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands. It's five votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. Right now on item number nine, which is citizens comments for matters not on the agenda. If there are matter, <laughs> thank you, Charlie. <laughs> He's already shaking his head no. So if there are any, is there anyone here in the chamber who would like to speak to a matter not on the agenda, or if someone is online, please raise your hand and, uh, or step forward. Thank you. I guess we're moving along right now to item number 15 already, which is the mayor's report. I just want to mention two things. Um, one is that the uh, executive council, as you may know, uh, approved the land swap for between the state and the city of Laconia, which I think is uh, great news. And from what I understand, you're talking about it with uh, the city manager, looks like it's going to be a fairly expedited process. So we'll take ownership of that 10 acre lot fairly soon and should be part of a, um, um, a general discussion shortly thereafter, the city council and the manager. And, uh, see if anybody has some ideas about what might be a, a good plan as we proceed. So uh, pleased to see that and appreciative of the work of our executive counselor, Joe Kenny, and assisting. I also just want to mention, uh, I think anyone who had an opportunity, and I, I know I saw uh, Councillor Haynes downtown and um, uh, this weekend, but I think it was really a remarkable 
event that um, Karen Bassett and Ben Bellerwell and their teams uh, at Wayfair pulled off. Um, I think it was just <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> speaking of um, I, I think it was just extraordinary to see what they pulled together in, uh, you know, really five, five short months, the number of vendors here, the number of events, and the number of not only our local city residents downtown that we were bumping into for the New England Coffee Festival, but to see all the people from out of town who traveled here to participate and uh, had their eyes opened um, as to what's going on in the city here. So it was really a, a very special day for the city of Laconia. I really want to say thank you to Karen and Ben. Um, just an, an extraordinary, extraordinary day in so many respects and um, really pleased to see the turnout and the energy um, with, with the event. So uh, moving right along now to item number 16, which is council comments. I, no, I was going to recognize you first and if you, we can go to him next. If you want. I don't wish Kenny would have been this good years ago. Councillor uh, Kenny, welcome. Uh, step right up. I wanted to recognize you. I know you have a lot of ground to cover here in <laughs> District 1. So, and, and I had just mentioned your name here in, in regards to the land swap. Um, with the state, and I just wanted to say thank you for your support of, of on, on that issue. You've been uh, a great advocate as we try to pursue some um, pursue options with the state school property. And I just want to say thanks very much. Yeah, absolutely. It was my uh, uh, my pleasure to do that, uh, Mr. Mayor. And uh, obviously, it was great to get the support from the city. That makes my job a lot easier. So, but really, I just wanted to just. Briefly, if I could just give you an update on the state property with CBRE. Sure, that'd be great. Kind of where we're at. So last week, the, the Commissioner of Administrative Services, Charlie Arlinghouse, gave uh, the council kind of an update report on where we are with, with regards to sale of the property. And so um, I think we know about the property itself here, but uh, you mentioned that uh, the broker CBRE is taking the lead, which we all know, and in their meeting on a weekly basis. And, um, and obviously they're working with, um, you know, a lot of different uh, groups that are, are approaching CBRE. And um, one of the things that, um, that in talking to, um, I believe I should know his name. I just got off the phone with him, Roger Decker, is that They've um, been approached by uh, a very uh, groups of people and, and with regards to this property and that this is really kind of a, a nationwide search, but obviously there's a, a lot of local interests with uh, development. So, and he's trying to really stir these particular groups with, um, you know, what are the potential proposals that could be used for this property? Um, what are their capabilities? What's their resumes? Um, and then obviously looking at the numbers. And, um, and, and he's been asking them, um, uh, tell us what you're gonna do at this property. Um, obviously uh, they need to work with the city of Laconia. Um, he, he really thinks that eventually probably get it down to four or five, um, you know, serious, um, you know, groups that are interested in the property who have the capability. And, um, and he's looking for multi-page proposals. Um, have they done this type of work before? And, um, and, you know, what are they looking to do with this property? Um, I think they just recently sat down with a Corbeck group just recently, maybe with the city as well, I'm not sure. Um, and so there, he's asking, for these groups to put their best foot forward uh, because he's got to impress the governor and council. But while impressing the governor and council, he has to impress the city of Laconia. Uh, this group has to impress the city of Laconia because um, without that, it just doesn't work. And so that's been a consistent message is that the state and the city of Laconia work together in partnership really to get the right developer or owner onto the state property who's gonna look out for the best interest and future of the area. Um, obviously confidentiality is very key to these you know, different groups as they kind of compete against each other. Um, there's no commitment to a timeline at this point. I think that really rests with um, 
Commissioner Arlinghouse and his group. But having said that, there's going to reach a saturation point, and, and that could be you know within the next you know two to four months. So uh, I believe it's going to be admin services who are going to say, okay, we've had enough interest. We have the the folks that have the capability and interest to take on this project. We now have to uh, you know sit down with them and see uh, and, and potentially pick one to say this is the one we think that that could work with the city of Laconia and do the project. Um, there is there are people inquiring all the time. Um, there have been over apparently over 100 hits of interest uh, on that website that CBRE has um, put together. Um, and so once again, um, there's probably an interest with local developers to take it off the market and work with, with the state and the city. However, um, it's got to be an, you know an open bid process. Um, so that's the the update that I have at this point. They have reached out to the um, Lakes Region Redevelopment Planning Commission at one point to, with Chairman Bald and um, Bob Cheney. I think they want to catch up to Rust McClear at one point with his background in the hotel industry. And so entertain any questions or any directions from City of Laconia, how can, you know, you know, I'm dealing with a CBRE on one hand, and but also admin service on another hand, trying to, you know, at least give an update from time to time on where this process is going and where we're at right now, because um, every so many meetings, I say, what's going on with the state property? And uh, with the whole discussion with the, um, the agenda 109 with regards to, um, you know, the breaking of the lease and um, giving the property, uh, a parcel of property to the city of Conia, that's on, on tape, okay? So anytime that there's discussion on the state property with regards to this property, I should give you a heads up and say that uh, the executive council has had a discussion on this topic. You can go to the state uh, website and, and listen to the audio tape on that because I never want to think I'm speaking for the city of Laconia, but that I'm really speaking on behalf of the state and the city of Laconia, which I represent. So I always have to keep that into a, you know context. So, so that's probably a lot of gibberish that you probably <laughs> are saying, what the heck is he talking about? No, no but not at, it, all. at least it gives you an idea that we're thinking about this project very closely and it has not left our hearts and minds that, that we want to make sure it works out well. Councilor Kenny, I, I just uh, am so appreciative that at the end of a long day, you'd come here and, and chat, and this isn't the first time you, you've done this. So I, 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 I just really appreciate that. There's lots of reasons for you to start heading home, but instead you, you, come in, you, you came in here, and, and I think that speaks volumes uh, to your work. Um, and, and I've always appreciated uh, how accessible you, you are. And, you know, and, and talking about the, the property, and I've said to, to, to people who have, you know, maybe just wanted to chat about it with me, I've said, you know, it, it, if, if you can align the city of Laconia, the, the investor, the city of Laconia, uh, administrative services and the governor, um, governor and council, you know, you're probably in pretty good shape. Um, so, you know, we remain open and receptive to anyone who wants to chat about potential uh, development there and what they envision and um, you know we know how special the property is as well so we just want to be good stewards of it and um, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to when we get to that point where maybe we've got four or five uh, bids on the property and some competing ideas I think that's really you know if that comes to fruition it's fantastic so well that's where we're headed and I appreciate that Mr. Mayor and uh I do like coffee over pumpkins, so I um, congratulate the city of Laconia. <laughs> Councilor Chini, go right ahead. I just want to make a comment. I, I think uh, uh, Councilor Kenny is here talking about the state school property, but he's done a lot of other things for the city over the last several years, uh, and and he's not he's not one off, and he's not. Uh, amongst the missing. He's here tonight and he's been here other nights. And I just want to say thank you, not just for this, 
but for all the other things you've called us about or asked for our, our opinion, uh, I just think you've done an ab above average job and thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's a high from praise me. from Councillor Cheney when he says you're above average. A that's... <laughs> director, that's about as best as But um, I will say we fought hard for uh, to get away from knocking down the bridge in the Weirs uh, area. Oh, that's in regards what I to creating a, a restoration project versus a demolition project yeah. and and you know it happened right here because we had yep. uh, a ten-year highway improvement plan hearing, and the public spoke, and um, and the commission, um, you know, DOT commission, myself heard it loud and clear, and they shifted uh, the path on, in course of action. So I think that spells uh, volumes for the leadership and for the citizens of Laconia is that the state will listen and they'll you know, they'll make corrective action. Um, just as I've listened to some citizen just recently who, um, who live on Lane Road, who said, if you do build a future communications tower, we want to be involved. And oh, by the way, we've got some suggestions. So, so it, it doesn't stop it, you know, in some ways it just begins. So, so that's what we're all here for. So, so thank you so much for allowing me to say a few words. I would point out that the uh, DOT's willingness to accommodate the city was largely due to a governor's counselor who made him aware that that they ought to at least consider uh, our our request. So when I say thank you for other things, as a matter of fact, it's on the agenda tonight. Uh, those are the things I'm talking about, Colonel. I I don't think you do once in a while. I think you're constantly at it, and I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. I can see a campaign piece that you deliver in this community that says, Councillor Cheney says I'm above average. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not concerned to see it. Via a bell curve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor. Yeah, it's always great you. to see you. Thanks, Councillor. <laughs> Let's go to Council comments. Go right ahead. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I just want to echo your comments. Uh, I was very impressed. The people that were up and down the streets were having a great time. And, uh, you know, I made the comment to you, and I'd like to make the comment to the city, to the councillors, that uh, this is what we want our city to be like. And we want it to be welcoming and for people to feel that this is a great place and it's going to continue to grow. Thank you. Yeah, you know, and it, I found too that it wasn't all about the colonial. But the Colonial played a significant role in this as well, in that it was there, it was the venue for some of the get togethers, it was, you know, it was, I like to think that it's one of the things that perhaps Mayor Engler envisioned when he, 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 he thought about what the Colonial would do to downtown and um, I hope he's happy. Go right ahead, Councilor Susan. Um, different subject. Okay. You're gonna bring us down now? No, I'm, gonna keep, <laughs> I'm trying to build you up. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so it can be above average. <laughs> I, I understand this is a Christmas tree day, so you know. <laughs> I know that I'm in the last meeting, a couple of meetings ago, um, I mentioned to you or something else like that, and I'm not saying we do something. I just want to get it on the table, so maybe we. I'm not sure if there's any action or something we should do or take. And that has to do with pumpkin fest. Okay, and. I don't, like I said, I don't know if this is the right place, I mean, the right time or something else like that. But I think the city needs to find a way to support this one somehow. My idea is through the Parks and Recs Department, because I like this is really should be a, a city, city led celebration in my mind. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I haven't talked to anybody else really about this. Okay. I mean, I mentioned it to you last time we were here. And, um, Somehow we've got to um, do our part. We we spend money on the triathlon. We spend money on on you know um, multiple different things throughout the year. Okay, that support the city. And this is something that I think is pretty significant, and pretty major. And and I the reason I say the Parks and Recs Department to me that would be the vehicle. And I think they would be in that. I'm I haven't talked to Ann or you know or anybody else like this, but I just want to put it out on the table maybe get some feelings from the rest of the counselors. I, I 
I know maybe you would talk to us something else like that, what your ideas are, but and we're getting it's in May. And I just want to keep, you know, keep something moving along here. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's a, <clears throat> I haven't had any specific conversations as to if there should be an expanded role that the city should take in Pumpkin Fest. I have had a number of conversations with the Chamber of Commerce and some uh, folks from in the city that uh, I think would help make up a steering committee here. I think there's a lot of moving parts right now. Um, so I'm happy to kind of get you up to speed after the meeting or maybe tomorrow okay. sometime we'll chat. I'm just give me a call because I have some other items. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I have someone else. I just. How about uh, either council comments, committee reports, or liaison reports? One at a time, one at a time. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to item number 19. Citizens request a comment on current agenda <clears throat> items. What, what if something you'd like to Charlie? speak to, now would be the appropriate time, both in the chamber as well as online. Welcome again, Thank you, Mr. St. Clair. Since you mentioned that about the pumpkin fest, I just wanna say there's a lot of support for that out there, yes. what you just said, and the mayor knows that. I just want to talk about the bridge, which I refer to as the Bruce Cheney Bridge up there at Weir's, uh, Weir's <laughs> Beach. And, and there's it, 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 people chuckle, chuckle about that, but I he did do an awful lot. Yeah. But at the at one meeting I wasn't here for, and I watched it on Zoom, I remember some of the councils had concerns about that bridge being used in the winter and being plowed and stuff like that. And, I, and I'm sure you all know the history of this. I just want to remind you all that that bridge has never been used in the winter. All the years I've been around here, uh, the entrance in front of the weather vane, as a city manager can attest to, has opened up as a, an entrance in that back area to take the part of the bridge. So I just want to throw that out there again before we get into your discussion. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Anyone online, Mr. Smith? Okay. I'm moving along to the city manager's report and turn it over to Scott Meyer. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, while we're going down a little history lesson, I hope you all had a chance to read Saturday's Daily Sun in the then and now, and I think in the 50-year blurb, it spoke about the um, new construction of the parking garage, yes. and it was very amusing that it talked about it was going to have this, you know, non-traditional garage looking facade or an mansard roof to match up, and it really was going to be the piece de resistance and the urban redevelopment. I kind of read that with the conversations where we are today and got a good smile. So if you haven't read it, just go back online and, and find it from Saturday's um, in the in the 50 year report. But it was, um, I think I spit out my coffee when I was <laughs> <laughs> reading that, but it was very apropos. So uh, the mayor did tell me there's a basketball game or something on tonight and I should keep it quick tonight. So we'll go into the project report. Uh, we continue to work on the um, on the paving on uh, Elm Street with the sewer project. We're on a couple of the side streets right now and staying out of the area in front of the school until Elm Street School gets out for the season. Then we'll be there and we'll be looking to wrap up that project in August. We'll be moving on to um, the other part of the uh, sewer project down there called the Northern Lakeport area, which will be North Street, Sheridan, School Street, Belvedere. That will not begin until we wrap up everything on Elm Street. Uh, Union Avenue, uh, uh, paved markings on there looks um, looks great. Uh, that's going to buy us uh, a number of years before we have to be in there doing a reconstruct. There's, there's that's the that's the section of Union Ave that has not been fully reconstructed. Let's say in the last ten years, I think the only other piece probably runs from Busy Corner to the intersection here at Main Street. But um, that's going to happen sometime post October first. I can't tell you what year, but that'll be on someone else's <laughs> um, someone else's watch. Um, also wanted to point out that um, it was raised at the last meeting, the Weir's Beach restoration. So we'll be a little more of an update. So this project um, hit a stalemate probably a little over two years ago right now. And, and part of that was a change in some staff. Part of that was um, when I was involved with some conversations with DES about the requirement that they wanted some kind of a water garden to talk about handling stormwater and runoff and use it as an educational piece and basically is creating a faux kind of natural plant wetlands area and stuff to the tune of about 75 or a hundred thousand dollars that my opinion was that money could be much 
better used towards the beast restoration and pointed out with DES that um, we had recently done a significant street upgrade. We had brought in the sewer sniffing dogs prior to that. We located illicit you know, hookups and sewer lines that maybe were going into storm drains from who knows how many years ago and done a lot really to invest in the stormwater and, and clean up um, the runoff down there. So we kind of had a stalemate, COVID hit, uh, but I will assure you we will get that back on the front burner and get conversations going again. But um, and, and that's mostly on me when, when Kevin left and uh, it was one of those things that was there and through whatever I just mentioned, it um, has fallen by the wayside, but we will get that back on track for you. Um, the other report that is in your packet is the economic development uh, report. You can see the unemployment numbers uh, continue to be very low locally and across the state. Uh, and in the opposite direction on the second page of that report, you can see inflation continues to be um, extremely high with a second number uh, a month in a row where we had inflation of over 8%. So four months into the year, um, you know, we're annualized at 8.05% uh, at right now. So um, that's challenging. I know we talked a little bit about during the budget presentations. Again, those budgets start to get assembled in the December timeframe and compiled in January. And uh, these types of fuel numbers were really not on anybody's radar there. So it's certainly something we have to watch a little bit, but it's not only for heating, it's for our fleets, it's for, you know, all of our vehicle vehicles citywide. Um, once we start putting all the police officers on bicycles to help combat that, it's something that we're going to, we're going to have to be watching. So uh, happy to take any questions anyone may have tonight. Go right ahead, Councilor. On the DES matter, do you think the Councilor Kenny could be of support to you in working that through? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to... Mm. Bring it back one more time. I think I think part of this challenge with DES and and certainly they've been willing to have conversations is they've never seen a restoration project or a water a wetlands impact project of this magnitude. So they don't have a manual or history or anything go back to and say, well, this is how we handled it here. So I think there's a, a learning curve on a lot of people's parts as to what should be a component of it. And certainly, I think we all agree that this should be a restoration that's going to hold. It shouldn't be a restoration that turns out to be needing to do a renourishment of beach sand every 10 years because we haven't solved the problem, whether it's the currents, whether it's the jetty being extended, whether it's any combination of things. Uh, the other conversation that might even be a little harder to line up is those in the boating world will tell you that a lot of that sand goes around and into the channel and is now being deposited as the current slows down, down, you know, along some of the marinas and down in the Naswa area. And something I learned in this process is that it's the Army Corps of Engineer is responsible for dredging even in inland um, landlocked bodies of water you know, as this lake. It's so you always think of them with the dredging harbors and Seabrook and Portsmouth and those types of projects. But this is really an Army Corps project, which ties into, you know, federal dollars or federal operations. Um, but if we know that's where the sand came from and it came from the beach, isn't that a natural way to kind of kill two birds with one stone to be pulling that out to make the, the shallowness um, you know, deeper to make the to make that area of the channel deeper and be putting the sand back to a good use rather than bringing in outside sand. So um, that's a new wrinkle that's kind of come up in the mix as well. And um, we'll have to look to see if there's an opportunity to piggyback the two so that Army Corps can do the channel at the same time, produce some materials for us, assuming they're suitable materials at this point. Um, so certainly some testing and stuff, but um, uh, certainly, Councilor Kenny and I talk, uh, you know, probably every two to three months on different topics and certainly um, definitely a resource if it comes to that. Yes. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I got it. I'm above yes. average, too. <laughs> Across the Said board, who? you're above average. <laughs> you told me that oh, once. Oh, did I? I <laughs> almost above average. Almost above average. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's move right along now. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, under new business, we're going to move to item number 21A, uh, which is a um, uh, proposal to increase our solid waste fees. Scott, would you give us maybe just an overview of this, please? Yeah. So this is tonight just a, a first reading and moving to a public hearing, but this has gone before the Public's work, Public Works Committees a couple of times. So it's nothing to do with automated system or toters. This is basically um, looking at the big ticket item in, in commercial tipping fees for commercial haulers bringing materials um, into our transfer station. And then also some of the smaller things that occasionally impact Laconia residents, 
disposing of a propane tank or a Freon appliance or tires type of thing. And we're just basically doing some housekeeping and bumping up the cost, um, which have not, you can see the last time we've, re we've increased a lot of these fees have been you know, many, many years. This is just keeping up with, with our current cost and making us current so that we're not losing money by accepting the propane tanks and stuff. The, the big ticket item here is the disposal cost, which again is gonna be on the um, commercial haulers. And that's just tied in with everything you've heard already of landfill space being scarcer and um, uh, the tipping fees going up. Uh, we all know what fuel is doing. So the diesel component of our hauling contract um, is going up and just cost in general to operate the transfer station. So um, the last time that we had an increase um, at the transfer station, I had the year here and it's not jumping on me. Was it 2019 or 20 was? 2020. So um, looking to move this to the public hearing, have a vote on it in a couple of weeks. And then these rates could go into effect for July 1, tying into our fiscal year, which then allows us to set the revenue that we're projecting in the budget, mm -hmm. which will then help offset some of the increases that we're going to have in solid waste, regardless of which direction we end up going in. Go right ahead. Make the motion to move it to a public hearing. So we've got a series of three motions here. It looks like we might have to roll through them. Okay. So the first motion I'd be looking for is a move to waive a reading of this ordinance in its entirety and read by, read by title only, Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Littman. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Secondly, I'd like to motion to move a first reading of ordinance 20, 22-194-16. 24. So made by Councilor Phelps, seconded by Councilor Lippman. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative and that motion passes. And finally, looking for a motion to schedule a public hearing on June 13th, 2022, during the regular city council meeting to gather input prior to any action being taken. So made by Councilor Lippman, seconded by Councilor Felch. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'd ask, if you're in favor, raise your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 21B, which is the first reading of a resolution 2022-08 relative to making itemized appropriation for city funds for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 and terminating June 30th, 2023. The proposed uh, fiscal year 23 budget was presented to the city council on April 11th, 2022 per section 5 colon 04 of the city charter. A public hearing must be held prior to the adoption of the budget by the council to allow for public input and discussion. This is the first reading of the budget and resolution. Scheduling of the budget public hearing with the second reading will follow. The proposed budget includes estimated revenues and expenditures for the general fund, motorcycle week fund, Ambulance EMS Fund, Sanitary Sewer Fund, Water Works Fund, Internal Service Fund, Downtown TIF District, Lake TIF District, Weir's TIF District, as well as the estimated tax rate for the general fund. Right now, I'll be looking for a, a series of three motions. First of all, the move to, re to waive reading of this resolution and read by title only, made by Councillor Cheney, seconded by Councillor Susi. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. That's five votes in the affirmative. If that motion passes. Secondly, you'll be looking to move a first reading of resolution 2022-08 relative to making itemized appropriations for city funds for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022 and terminating June 30th, 2023. So made by Councillor Felch, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. And finally, looking to move to schedule a public hearing on June 13th, 2022, during the regular city council meeting to gather public input prior to adoption. So made by Councillor Lippman, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative. And that motion, motion hmm. passes. We'll pump the brakes a moment. Just for one second, I hope Councillor Lippman <laughs> is appreciative that the work of Glenn Smith and legal, we got this all down into one resolution and probably you, Mr. Mayor, are happy that you didn't have to read nine of these times three motions and you'd be going back to the water cooler again. So Glenn, <laughs> Glenn worked with legal and we got this all down to one consolidated item. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Go right ahead. Well, 
thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Nine times. <laughs> thank you. Um, just for purposes of the public being able to have input on the budget, can we um, at least um, try to identify what, what point in the meeting this would be, uh, public input would be taken so people can budget their time to be here? This pretty much will come right in the front with the public hearing. So other than minutes and maybe a couple of consent items, um, you know, in the area of 10 past seven, 715, depending on what it looks like, okay. would be the opportunity for folks. So there'll be a public notice of this? It would be advertised, yep. So is it possible to put that in there too for, for people or not? Or is that? I think it was within a few minutes. You hate to say the public yeah, yeah. hearing won't start until 715 because say we get there at 705 and now we've got to stop and wait. So I think I think at most... I'll make sure the agenda is in front end loaded with anything and we can get to public comments on it. That's great. Thank you. Great. Okay, moving on to item number 21 C, which is uh, 2022 first half sewer warrant per chapter 189 50, capital C, collection of flat rate sewer accounts is collected by the tax collector. Um, what's the chapter on that? That's not an RSA. Is it RSA or is it the city? 4129. It's what's the city? It's a city chapter? Okay, all right. So the fiscal impact would be collect, looking to collect $211,933.78. Um, looking for a motion to move to approve the 2022 first half sewer warrant. So made by Councilor. Phelps, seconded by Councillor Susi. Any further discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Warrant for us to sign. You're saying the mayor has the hard copy in his. Yeah, I can it to Okay. So this, where, where is it? it's it? It's in this. I I handed it in to Nancy. So it let me go. There. Let me go check your mailbox. It might be sitting in your mailbox. So we can get it. Okay. So, oops. Sorry. I want to make sure you have something signed when we leave. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a copy, not the original that we need. Yeah. Let me get you. Let me just pop down here. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't check my mailbox. Do we need uh, the manager to take up 22? No, I don't think we do necessarily. We can we can kind of go through this and Wes is here through, I think if we have any questions on this. So item number 22A, which is the future of the wood bridge over the railroad tracks on Centenary Avenue. Uh, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation has provided a draft of the agreement for the city council's consideration of New Hampshire DOT's proposal to rehabilitate the wood bridge over the railroad tracks on Centenary Avenue. This agreement is dependent upon the city accepting the bridge as part of the city's road system. Under this proposal, all future maintenance, repair, and replacement will be the responsibility of the city after the bridge has been rehabilitated. New Hampshire DOT will fund 100% of the project's participating costs to incl include design costs using federal fiscal year fund 2025 funds. However, the city, 
The project sponsor in the agreement is responsible for managing the design and the construction of the project. Under this draft agreement, the ownership of the wood bridge will be transferred to the city once New Hampshire DOT has accepted the bid proposal and issued a notice to proceed to construction. Uh, New Hampshire DOT has programmed $1,280,623.54 for the project. If during the design process, the city determines the cost of the project will exceed the budget, then the city must request additional funding before proceeding further with the project. I don't know if there's a, I'm happy to read as much as you like on this or um, I'd like to make the motion. So I'd be looking for a motion. <clears throat> Councilor Susie would like to make the motion that the city council approve accepting the wood bridge over Centenary Avenue upon New Hampshire DOT's acceptance of the rehabilitation project's bid proposal and New Hampshire DOT's notice to proceed with the construction process. Further move that the city council approve the federal aid project agreement for the project number 24181. The project to rehabilitate the wood bridge on Centenary Avenue and authorize the city manager to sign the agreement. Second, so made by Councillor Susi, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Councillor Lippman. In terms of um, council reviewing the agreement, uh, has that happened yet? Legal counsel? Um, it's, it's the standard, so the, it's the standard state federal project program so it's pretty much a boilerplate template and Wes is this the one that um, we moved moved to some of the, the state moved into some of the federal um okay thank you sorry I was confused we got one other bridge they accelerated through the federal money in that one okay so this was always 100 percent through the federal aid project program so thank you any further discussion seeing none all those in favor of the motion on the table please Raise your hand. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Okay, so item number 22B, which is the First Amendment to EJM Holdings LLC lease agreement for parking spaces for occupants of residential units above the Colonial Theater. On November 22nd, 2021, the City Council approved a lease agreement with EJM Holdings LLC to approve parking spaces for residents of the units above the Colonial Theater. Attached is a copy of that original agreement, which provided for 10 spaces in the City Hall parking lot and eight spaces on Main Street. Rusty McClear of EJM Holdings LLC has requested that the lease agreement be amended to provide for nine parking spaces in the city hall parking lot and nine spaces in the main street lot. A map is attached showing the new allocation of parking spaces in both lots. At the April 25th, 2022 council meeting, a motion was approved to table this item. Attached is a copy of the first amendment to parking lease agreement for the council's review and approval. It's now off the table, correct? need to have a motion to take the item off the table. So the first thing that we would do, there it is, it's actually right in front of me, isn't it? Uh, we're looking for a motion to take this I, this agenda item off the table. So made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Susi. Any further discussion? Seeing Thank none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. You in Councilor Susi? Yeah, oh, sorry about that. That's four votes in the affirmative. All those opposed, one opposed, the motion passes. Secondly, I'm looking for a motion to approve the first amendment to parking lease agreement as presented and to authorize the city manager to sign the lease amend amendment on behalf of the city. So made by Councilor Cheney, seconded by Councilor Susi. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's four votes in the affirmative. All those opposed, that's one opposed, that motion passes. Item number 22C. This is a discussion of New Hampshire Electric Co-op announcement regarding herbicide, herbicide, herbicide treatment on transmission line 124 on Layton Avenue. Um, 
as you recall, at our May 9th, 2022 meeting, the City Council discussed the Conservation Commission's request that the Council not support the application of herbicide pesticide along transmission lines with impacts to private wells and shorelands and to not allow New Hampshire Electric Co-op to proceed with the treatment as outlined in the announcement. After discussion, the City Council tabled this matter to a future meeting pending additional information on the proposed herbicide treatment. Subsequent to May 9th council meeting, city manager Scott Myers has received information from Vegetation Control Service, Inc. that the area to be treated this year would be along the southern end of Layton Avenue within the state forest ending at Tyler Shores. Um, per, according to New Hampshire special permit number 044, they must maintain a 75 foot setback buffer for all private wells, a 250 foot buffer for public wells and a 25 foot buffer for all water sources, i.e. lakes, ponds, streams, vernal pools, culverts, and all other wetlands. All landowners abutting the easement will be notified if treatment is to be done on their property. New Hampshire law allows landowners to opt out of any herbicide treatment. So the first motion we'd be looking for right now is to remove this item from the table. So made by Councillor Haynes, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Any further discretion? Seeing none, all those in favor of taking it off the table, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. You didn't want to preclude what your future motion might be. I can share with you that I did share uh, this information that came by email from John Kucher at Vegetation, Vegetative Services. Did share it with Dean Anson, sent him a copy of the email. Um, we talked about it briefly. His response was, that sounds great. It certainly was not a full opinion or, or recommendation of the Conservation Commission, but um, that was his response that this sounded like, and I don't want to speak for him, had the safeguards and that he was hoping um, that could be there for people. So now that it's off the table, what would the, the motion that was that we dealt with on May 9th? That was originally to support the Conservation Commission's position that we wanted to look for alternatives from a herbicide. So I didn't want to preclude what your motion might be, but I also just didn't want to leave this orphaned on the table. So now it's off the table. Um, maybe the motion, you know, can be that the council acknowledges that they heard the concern of the Conservation Commission, um, got additional information and are comfortable with what's been presented and therefore take no action. Would anyone like to? So <laughs> Councilor Gini, seconded by Councilor Susi. Is there any further discussion on this? Seeing none. Oh, oh Councilor Haynes. Uh, Scott, uh, I'm concerned about a 20 foot, 25 foot buffer mm -hmm. from water sources, lakes, ponds, streams, and well, vernal pools. Is that customary? I would think that they'd be a further distance than 25 feet. That, so I, I don't know exactly the herbicide they're using, but I would think that whatever the state DES has looked at and what they're using um, is acceptable at that level where it's not a public uh, water drinking source. And again, you need to remember this isn't just a, a wide swath of spraying over a large area. It's strictly to treat the sucker shoots off of trees they've already cut down. So it's going to be spot treated um, and again, DES has reviews this. These folks are licensed yeah. with the state. So it's not a broadcast all? No. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Thank you very and much. It, and it does cover, again, vernal pools, streams, brooks, okay. anything is Thank considered you. a water body. Councilor Felch. I'm the certified well operator. I go through all these regulations with DES and I can verify that that's standard. It is, okay, thank you. Any other questions or concerns to discuss? On, um, sure. Well, we made the motion. Yep, motion. We did make the motion. We did. We did. And it's on the table. We're getting ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands. It's five votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Um, I would like to adjourn the city council meeting of May 22nd, 2022, at 7 55.